Well, the Western Conference hooping tonight, and the Phoenix Suns look to complete a perfect five-game road trip when they visit the Dallas Mavericks. Phoenix holding on to the best record in the association at 34-9, and and not to mention their last eight games, 7-1, and one, so close to perfect. Suns streaking at the right time, by the way, coming in on a four-game win streak. As I mentioned, they're trying to make a nice little five-piece. So when we look at the rankings there, every week it's a new number one. By no surprise, the Suns trending in the right direction there, landing in the top spot. A lot of that has to do with Devin Booker taking it up a notch, averaging nearly 38 points in the past three games, including that 48 in San Antonio. The defending West champs trending in the right direction, as I mentioned there. Behind them, you got the Heat staying steady at two. The Grizz dropping down two spots at three. The Dubs up one to four. And Chicago down to five when you look at the rankings so far. All right, let's welcome in NBA writer Colin Warhittinger and the champ here, Rip Hamilton, to talk about the association. And Colin, I'll start with you. The Suns at number one, a no-brainer, but what's been the key for them to get to that top spot? Uh, well, I mean, Devin Booker is just absolutely going crazy. He scored 35, 30, and 48 in three games this week. Uh, we all know Devin Booker could put the ball in the basket, right? He scored 70 points really early in his career, but he drew some criticism for that, uh, perhaps chasing points late in the game. And of course they lost that game. So he drew some criticism for the way he celebrated. So Booker's aware of that. He said after one of his big scoring nights this week, you know, I've done the scoring and a loss thing. That's not it. And, and you can see that in his play. His scoring is down a little bit this year, but he's doing all the little things to make this team better. That includes getting after on the defensive end. He should be a career high from three point range. And if you're the Suns, you look around at the league, you gotta love where you're sitting right now. Chris Paul has career low efficiencies, averaging close to career low in points. Booker has shot well from three, but hasn't shot well from two, and they've still got the best record in the league. Uh, they have all the confidence in the world coming two wins away from an NBA championship last year. Uh, the Suns are the real deal. Uh, last year was not a fluke. This is going to be a very dangerous team in the playoffs. Yeah, and I, and I, and I, and I think definitely uh, this year they improved on the defense side of the ball. I think they got back to the basics early in the season. Uh, they had to make some adjustments. A lot of teams were staying in the game early in the game. And Phoenix will figure out a way to really lock in in the fourth quarter. But now they're starting to do it for four quarters. Uh, Mikael Bridges, he, he he's took the next step. I know a lot of people were questioning in, uh, in offseason when he got paid that big contract. But he's really stepped it up. He's really been taking challenges on the defensive end, uh, guarding the best player. Should be a fun matchup against Dallas uh, tonight, seeing him go against Luka Doncic. But uh, – Everybody knows Devin Booker and Chris Paul is going to get a lot of credit. Uh, but guys like like Mikael Bridges done an excellent job. The team has done an excellent job defensively. Mon Monty Williams done really got this team ready, prepared for the regular season because I, I know what it feels like to lose the NBA Finals. And a lot of times in, in a regular season, you kind of don't come out with the type of energy you need to to win basketball games because you're just looking to the playoffs and trying to get back uh, to the NBA championship. This team is – is locked in. Uh, uh, it starts with Devin Booker. Uh, last time I seen a guy that has that laser type focus uh, for, for the regular season in every game was the great Kobe Bryant. So this kid is locked in. Uh, even though he's, he's super young, he's, he's, he's putting his team on, the, on his back, being prepared to come out each and every game to try to get a win. CP3 and Book definitely leading his team, as you mentioned there. Hot post possibly back to the top spot and maybe into the finals. We'll see how that pans out. Open the East, though, the Bulls Will not have Lonzo Ball for some time. Report today, meniscus tear out for four to six weeks. Colin, how will this team kind of look if they're still trying to look towards maybe one of those top teams in the Eastern Conference? Yeah, this is going to be a big blow for them, and it hurts them on both sides of the ball. That's why it's such a difficult injury uh, to Lonzo Ball. He's become an excellent three-point shooter, shooting 42% on over seven attempts a game. It's crazy to think when you look back at that form when he first came in the league, slinging the ball sideways across his face. He's worked so hard uh, on those mechanics and become just a deadly shooter, and they need that floor spacing. A guy like DeMar DeRozan, as great as he is, does not shoot a lot of three-pointers. They need that spacing around him, so that's going to hurt on offense. On defense, the Bulls uh, have slipped. Uh, they're down to 18th in the league in defense, and they really need Lonzo out there. When he's on the floor, they have a 107 defensive rating, which would be about fifth in the league. When he's off the floor, it's 111, which is all the way down in the 20s. So uh, this is a, a devastating injury for them. I, I think they can fill in some of those minutes with Alex Caruso, who's an excellent defensive player. Ayo Desumu, the rookie, has been playing really well. Uh, but this is something that's going to hurt them on both sides of the ball as they navigate uh, this kind of stretch heading into the postseason. Yeah, I would have to agree. This is definitely going to hurt the Chicago Bulls. Uh, 
when when Ball came into this team, he kind of got back to to the old Lonzo Ball, kind of pushing pushing the the uh, the offense and transition, getting guys easy baskets. Uh, when you looked at this roster, when they added Demar Derozan, did they, they people the question mark was out there: is is there going to be enough balls for him and uh, Zach Levine out there on the floor? And I think Alon, Lonzo Ball is the glue to the puzzle. He's the guy that sets everybody everybody up, gets everybody easy shots, get off the ball early. That's the one thing that I love about him. He 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 gives the ball up in transition to allow the 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 top two twenty five. Uh, uh, scores in the lead to go out there and create on the offense end. So this is going to be a huge, huge blow uh, I see, especially on the offense end of just getting guys easy looks. Bulls, they're sitting five in the rankings right behind them, Colin. You got the Cavs of six who are trending up three spots. Look, it's been the young stars there. Darius Garland maybe making a case for an all-star nod, putting up those numbers. Is this something that Garland and also the Cavs kind of trend towards the rest of the way here? Yeah, the Cavs are for real. I mean, you look at all of their metrics and the indicators for a great team are there. They are a top three defense, which has been their calling card all season. And that's something that shows up every night, whether the ball's going in or not. They've kind of zagged and gone with this big lineup with three seven footers with Evan Mobley, Mobley, uh, Jared Allen and Lowry Marketing. And of course, as you mentioned, Garland has just been kind of the engine behind it all. They've been able to sustain injuries to Colin Sexton and Ricky Rubio, which a lot of people thought they wouldn't be able to get through. Uh, but you look at this team, they're fourth in the league in net rating, which suggests that, that they are for real. This is going to be a team that's going to be there in the end. And you look at the teams around them in the East, the Cavs have been consistent. You know what you're getting on a night-to-night -night basis. And if Garland can stay healthy and continue to play the way he's playing, this is going to be a very dangerous team in the Eastern Conference. It's kind of funny. You're only two and a half games back from the first spot and the way things are shaking up. We're still trying to wait and see when Brooklyn can get things together. The Bucks are kind of slowly peddling there as well. So the Cavs do have a shot. I'll rip back out west. The Mavs trending in the right direction. They won 10 of their last games here. We're starting to see maybe the Luka effect a little bit healthier than what we saw earlier in the season. They're seventh in the rankings. Can they kind of keep this going? Is this something sustainable there in Dallas? Brandon, this is what we expected from Dallas, <laughs> to be 100% honest with you. I mean, the, 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 when you got one of a top five player in your ball club, uh, Luka Doncic, what he's able to do uh, for, from his size standpoint, getting guys easy baskets, uh, he's probably one of the best clutch players we have in the game. Uh, we, we all knew about his capabilities on the offense end. What we was more concerned about this Dallas Mavericks team was the defense side of the ball. And now with Jason Kidd at, at the head coach, He's brought great defensive principles to this ball club and, and letting them know that, hey, we're going to score points. But if we do our job on the defensive end, uh, Porzingis, if you are a rim protector and you use your length out there and, and, and try to make plays for us on that side of the ball, good things that happen for, for, for this team. So I think that the most impressive thing for me about their whole red eye start is how great they've been on the defensive ball. And you got to give a guy uh, uh, his props, Jalen Brunson. I mean, this guy's going to get paid in the offseason. I mean, he got career highs in points, rebounds, and assists, averaging close to 16 points a game. Now he, now they got another guy that can take pressure off of Luka Doncic and handle the ball, bring the ball up, so Luka doesn't get tired as much, especially late in the season. So uh, Jason Kidd done, done an excellent job of getting this team ready to play basketball, but especially on the defense end. So the Mavs have been trending uh, elsewhere in La La Land. The drama continues for the Lakers. Uh, Colin, they lost to the Pacers last night. Not just the only loss, but we've seen this pretty much the whole course of the season. They're 20th in the ranking. What has been going on with LBJ, Russ, and even Frank Vogel saying after the game, what's been going on with the Lakers here? Man, uh, things just can't stay calm in Los Angeles. They have a big win over the Jazz. Uh, everybody thinks maybe they're going to start to turn this around. They turn around and lose to the Pacers at home. And all the, the rumors of Frank Vogel possibly getting fired come back up. The reports are that his job is safe for now. But this really seems like a game-to-game -game thing where they were possibly ready to fire him after that blowout loss to the Nuggets and that, that win over the Jazz maybe saved his job. And now Russell Westbrook is getting benched at the end of game. So Frank Vogel decided not to play him during the last three minutes and change of that loss to the Pacers. After the game, he said 
you know, I want to play the guys who give us the best chance to win. And certainly that's probably not something that Russell Westbrook wants to hear. The reports are that, that he left the game early, that he was out of the locker room before his teammates had finished showering. He did not talk to media. Uh, so this is an instance where, you know, previously in Russ's career, a lot of teams have kind of catered their roster to him. The Rockets traded away Clint Capella. Uh, the Wizards allowed him to play more center. This is a, a, an opportunity for the Lakers to see whether we can adjust our roster Roster, we can adjust our game plan or we're just going to say, hey, look, if Russell Westbrook hasn't been good in fourth quarters, we're not going to play him. But who knows if Frank Vogel is going to be the coach of this team next week. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, only thing I say when when something like this happens, I start scratching my head and start saying to myself, Russell Westbrook days are numbered as a Los Angeles Laker. Uh, been in a situation before in Chicago. Uh, when Tibbs wasn't playing me and Carlos Boozer uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, and teams don't do this, especially when you got a guy making the type of salary that Russell Westbrook is is, is receiving. Uh, that just lets you know that they have no more trust in Russell Westbrook, especially down the stretch of games. And, and when you're the point guard of this ball club and you're looked at as the leader, looked at as the guy that, hey, you know what's going to help this team get over the hump? We don't have to play LeBron James as much minutes on the floor because we have another superstar player in Russell Westbrook. When you start taking his minutes away and not playing him in the fourth quarter, you have to be concerned. And if I'm Russell Westbrook, I'm concerned too. I'm calling my agent right now and saying, hey, you know what, maybe this ain't the place for me. Because when you're talking about the Lakers and when we talked about them early in the season, Russell was the guy that was going to get them – to, to to the next level and hopefully get him back to that championship glory. So with them taking him out uh, in the fourth quarter, I'm concerned for him. I'm concerned for the Lakers right now. And then when you hear Frank Vogel say, hey, you know what? I, I, I got the call from management saying that just do what you got to do to win the basketball game. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of head scratching going on right now. So, so honestly, you think about it, this team was great in 2016. The only problem is it's 2022, and the way this roster is lined up does not work this season here. Rip and Kyle, appreciate your time as always, my friends. Tap it on association. Uh, it's true. Lakers can't get it right. We got a nice little three-piece for you tonight, though. Pelicans taking on the Knicks. Knicks the favorite by four here. Then, of course, the uh, number one team in the land, the Suns taking their town to see Luka and the Mavs at 730. And then following that game late night, the Doves, Steph Curry, and the Pacers heading out west, 32-12 and 12 in this one. See how that pans out. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.